about the King of Kings. And I want to say hi to everybody who's on live stream as well. And uh, welcome to Rock Point this beautiful Easter 2022 uh, morning. And it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, today we're, we're selling the, celebrating the greatest event ever in history. It's, a, you know, just a basic, uh, essential foundation for the Christian faith is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is pretty wonderful. You know, you think uh, Jesus uh, first appeared to Mary Magdalene. You know, uh, a lady who had had seven demons, you know, a horde passed, but God came into her, her life, transformed her, Jesus, touched her life, and she was changed. There were other women who had been helping Jesus for many, many years, and uh, they, they get an experience with Jesus. So the ladies got it first. How many know men, you know, sometimes the ladies get it before us, you know, and then there's, uh, then after that, Peter gets the revelation of Jesus and John, and then after that, it's, it's uh, all the two walking on the road to Emmaus, and they're, they're walking, and, you know, Jesus appears in another form, and he's talking to them. He starts opening up all the scriptures, and all of a sudden, their hearts are burning while they're listening to him. And all of a sudden, when they're breaking bread, uh, before the, you know, at the table of the Lord, Jesus breaks the bread. Their eyes are open. They see, they see Jesus. Hey, he's alive. They run back to Jerusalem. They tell all the people. They don't believe. You know, then uh, Jesus appears. He comes through the walls. And all the disciples see it except Thomas wasn't there. That is why you're never supposed to, to miss Sunday services. Right there, everybody. Because Jesus is going to show up, right? And so Jesus shows up uh, a week later, and he appears himself to Thomas. And Thomas, hey, touch it. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. Uh, do you see my side? Touch it. See if a, a spirit has doesn't have flesh and bones. And he appears to Thomas, and then from that point, he he appears to his half brother uh, James. And did, now, how many would have a hard time having your half brother being called the Son of God? Okay, I I, I definitely would. I would need a special appearance from the Lord from that for, for, for that reason. Anyways, he appears before him, and then and then the, he appears to five hundred other people. He, he they see him. They see Jesus. They have witnesses. In fact, many times in the scriptures, there's a, these little comments about, oh, he, he's, here's Cleopas. Uh, you know, he was there. And, the, the, oh, this Mary saw him. Salome saw him. You know, why do they even mention those names? It's like they're, they're like footnotes. It's like, hey, they're still alive. Just ask them. They were there. They saw, they saw it. And then he, eventually he appears out of time to uh, Paul. And Paul has the revelation of, of Jesus Christ. And it's like, Jesus is alive. You know, the, the authorities, they, they couldn't even uh, just show the body and say, oh, this is the body of Jesus. They failed to do that. The existence of the church, we're here today in 2022 because there was a flame lit on, on the day of Pentecost and G the Spirit of the Lord came into the church and boom, here we are. And lives are still being transformed and changed by the power of the gospel. How many here are a gospel story? Yeah. You know, of what, how Jesus has changed and transformed your life. The gospel of Jesus Christ is powerful. The good news of the risen Lord is wonderful. Everybody say, He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Indeed. Yeah, all right. That was pretty wimpy right there. But uh, anyways, hey, we'll work. We're, hey, let's try that again. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Indeed. Indeed. All right. All right. That was good enough. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I was, uh, this morning I'm going to be talking about King of Kings. You know, he's the, he, he, the king and his kingdom, the king and his death, and the king of our hearts. All right, and that's what I'm uh, talking about. The, in Mark 1, uh, 14, it says these words, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So here, here's Jesus. He's uh, making his appearance like the gospel of Mark starts him right at, doesn't give the birth narratives, and he, they start him right away. And there he is, and he's saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, the gospel of the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is his royal reign, where he rules and reigns in our life. When Jesus came, he came for uh, a singular purpose, to destroy the works of the enemy, to defeat the enemy, the, the, the power of the devil, the power of his dominion over our lives, and to bring healing and to bring restoration, to bring hope, to bring grace into our life, and let us know what God's love is uh, truly like for each and every one of us when Jesus came. And as he, he starts his ministry, he starts to bring his, where any place that he went, He's bringing his rule. He's bringing his authority. What are the two things? He's going to break the dominion of Satan over our life, and he's also going to bring healing and hope and restoration to our lives. That is what Jesus is going to do. It's such a beautiful thing. And so he, he starts off with a, uh, a leper, and uh, he, the person who has leprosy, and he heals this man of a skin disease, and then there's a paralytic where he uses it as an opportunity to talk about forgiveness. And then there's, in total, there are 37 miracles that are uh, represented in the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And they, they share these stories and these wonderful healings and restoration. Hey, a man who had a legion of demons, you know, and he comes, you are the son of a God. And then Jesus comes and he delivers him, sets him free. The demons go into some pigs and they go over the edge of the cliff. The man is set free and, uh, and liberated. You know, even the, the worst case scenarios, people, even the worst case scenarios, Jesus wanted to set them free and bring liberty. You know, there was a, uh, Jairus' daughter. He was like the uh, pa lead pastor of the synagogue. And his daughter passed away. How many know death is a pretty bad thing, okay? You know, we can get into a place where it is the worst case situation that we are dealing with. And Jesus comes into that scenario, and he says, hey, let me bring life. Maybe there's something right now you're dealing with your family. Maybe there's something you're dealing with yourself personally. Maybe there's something of something of death that has come into your heart and life right now, and just in your mind and in your thinking. Jesus comes to bring healing and restoration into our life. That's what he does. And ongoing, there's ongoing stories. The feeding of the 5,000. There they, they were to see. There is a divine supply that, that, that is out of our reach. Somebody gives like five pieces of bread and two fish, you know, the carbs and the proteins. Okay? Right. Carbs are good. Carbs are good. So, there's one amen. Thank you. All right? And they give that, and he multiplies that. He multiplies it and feeds the 5,000. Any place that Jesus went, any person that he was in contact, he was breaking the power and dominion of Satan, and he was bringing healing, hope, and life to that individual. Jesus has come to set you free. Jesus has come to bring his grace to your life. That is who Jesus is. He comes with his arms wide open, his love for each and every soul, not just for a specific individual, not just for just a little group. He's come that he might show his, his love and grace to everyone. Well, the religious leaders hated him. He ended up on the cross. And then we get to the next part of the, the story. The next part of the story is he's the king over death. And we read, here's the... Hey, let's all stand, okay? Let's all stand. I'm gonna get, we're going to read this all together. And this is the, just for the attendance to the reading of scriptures and just for the looking at this. Let's all read this together, okay? And I, I might stop you, okay, as we go, okay? And, and when the Sabbath was passed, okay, we're stopping right there, okay? There, there sometimes can be a silent Saturday in our life. Can I just say that? Sometimes there's something 
that really happens on the Friday where we're sort of in grief. And sometimes there's a silent Saturday where we think, hey, nothing is happening in my life that is a positive that's going on. But it's not over yet. Okay, let's read on. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they may come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone and from the door of the tomb for us? And when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side. Just stop right there. Uh, the other passages mentioned there, there's two of these individuals in glistening white robes that uh, they were that they were angels, and they okay and they were alarmed, but he said to them, "Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. That that he, that deserves a shout, there, people. Okay, let, let, let's get a little uh, yeah. I I I, I didn't. Okay, okay. I didn't say a clap, okay? I said a shout, okay? Yeah, let's go, let's go with those two lines uh, again. He is risen. He is not here. Let's get, yeah, let's clap, yeah. All right, very good. Okay, <laughs> see the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter. So, hey, hey, hey right there. I'm not going to be preaching on this part, but just here's a guy that thought it was all over okay and God specifically points them out maybe you feel it's all over for you for something you've done or where you've been God's pointing his finger at you to this morning and he's saying and and put your name in that blank okay and that he's going before you into Galilee there you will see him as he said to you uh, you may be seated he is risen. He is not here. You know, there's that young man guarding the tomb, and it says like he's, he's actually sitting on the stone. It's like he had his legs crossed. He's looking and watching, and uh, he's, what, what an assignment for an angel, okay, yeah, that you have the opportunity to announce the resurrection of the risen king. Like, Matt, could you imagine being in heaven and getting that assignment? You mean me, as an angel, thank you, Lord, I am going to be doing that. And so he's there, there he is. This, I, I, th I think when we all get to heaven, people, we're all going to be young men and young women. You know, we're all going to be, uh, just a thought, okay? All right. He, he, he is risen. He's not here. Um, the, the one word that is used here is, uh, it's just one word. It's, he is risen is actually one Greek word. It is agerthe, agerthe, like egg, okay? So like we have an egg hunt, okay? No relation whatsoever, okay? <laughs> agerthe, is, uh, it means he, he is risen. He's, he's awakened. He's, he's risen. And it's, this corpse is, has turned a key to become a king, you know? Je Jesus wasn't in a, a swoon, okay? He wasn't asleep, and it's like, oh, all of a sudden he, he rose up, and oh, oh, I was, I was uh, scourged and beat up and uh, crucified and died and pierced on the side, and, but I was just sleeping, okay? He w Jesus was dead, okay? And then Jesus' resurrection, it's just not a memory. Some people think, well, it's like a grandma or a grandpa who's passed away, and it's just like a good thought in, in their mind and heart. Oh, Jesus' resurrection, what a nice little thought. Or the idea to express stories that were symbolic of higher truths. The early church created these to, oh, give us hope and love. Oh, Jesus, you know, he passed away, but, you know, it was sort of like a new birth, resurrection idea that came to our mind. So, so think of this for a second, people, okay? There's Jesus. He comes to Thomas, and he says, hey, look at my hands. Look at my feet. Look at my side, okay? Put your hands in there, you know? Okay, what's the symbolic evidence or ref reference that he's doing there? Nothing. 
He's just showing that he's alive, that he's actually a physical body, you know. And when he says, hey, let's have some fish, let's eat right now. He says, hey, guys, let's have some fish and chips, okay? Everybody, let's just join in and have a meal together. What he was expressing, you know, the physical evidence of the resurrection is, is powerful. It's tremendous from the expression of the scriptures. But with that comes, you know, it's, it's not just that the, the, there, there's evidences or there's things that just point, hey, Jesus, it was a physical, actual physical re, uh, resurrection. There, there, what there was, was it was like a receipt. And let's say your wife tells you, say, hey, go to Fred Meyer, get something. You, you get it. You, you, you buy it. And you can come out with the receipt. And then you walk out of that store, and then she calls you again on the phone. Has that ever happened to anyone? You know, okay, and and you get the phone call, hey, get back in there, go buy something else. And the plain clothes guy comes around and he says, hey, that thing you got in your hand, do you have a a receipt for for that? And it's like, hey, leave me alone, buddy. Okay, and you you pull pull out the receipt. And it's, it's like, what the resurrection was, it was a receipt. It's like, Everything has already been paid for. Everything is already paid for. He was a verification by the Lord, by God himself, that Jesus had fulfilled and satisfied all of the demands that he was requiring for the salvation of your soul and my soul. And what he was saying, hey, all those promises that were made like 2,000 years ago, you know what? They are now activated. When we get to the cross and it says, hey, it is finished and the price has been paid and you can be forgiven of your sin, that you can be made a child of God, that you can come into right relationship with the the father and be his son and a daughter. You know what? All of those promises are now made for you, have been verified and declared true. They are all yours if you receive them. Those are all verified. Now, I like this verse here in 1 Peter 1. It says, because it supports what I'm saying, okay? All right. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, or born again, to a living hope. Okay, that's a noun, not a verb. To a living hope. Okay, notice that. And through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then to an inheritance corrupt, incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you. There is a living hope, and it's like with this noun, this place, we come into this realm where the, all of these, it's, it's like we, we're, we're, we've entered a zone of where the dismal past is now being broken. You know, the resurrection isn't a consolation, it's a restoration. It's a restoration of all that God intended for you and my life. It is, hey, it's the promise of joy. It's the promise of, of uh, let's say, let, let me give you a few more here. It's a promise of hope and a purpose. You know, the Epicureans who existed in the, in the Greek times, they, they, they would eat and drink for tomorrow we die. It's an annihilation. We're just death. We're extinction. We're fertilizer in the ground. What the gospel did was come into our life and say, hey, there is an eternal hope that is given for each one of us through Jesus Christ that is available. We get the eternity we never dreamed of. We get free from sin, guilt, our past, all of those areas. Turn to your neighbor, okay, look at your neighbor and say, this is pretty good, okay? All right? There, there is all of these things, you know, sometimes in uh, playing basketball, uh, Troy Bostetter and I, we play uh, basketball together with a few other men, and, uh, and you know, I'm, pro- I'm the oldest of the bunch, okay? Yeah, I, yep. 
<laughs> Anyways, yeah, thank you, honey. Yeah, encourage me a little bit. Okay, but there, there, are these, there are these moments, okay, in my basketball career, okay, that I, I have these outbreaks where I think I'm 25, okay, and I decide I am going to drive the lane with the ball and just whoo, fly and dunk that ball, you know, and it, but when I break loose, it's like all of a sudden, I shouldn't have done that. You know, hey, I am looking for the living hope and an inheritance, you know, that's reserved for me in heaven. One of those things is, hey, I'm going to get a new body, you know. What? what uh, <laughs> I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> wow. Man, I'm stopping right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. There, there is a resurrection, okay, that each of us are going to enjoy. Somebody, everybody say amen to the word of God, okay, amen. to the word of God, yeah. Everybody just say, wow, 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 you know. Yeah, that's it, all right. The blessings and the benefits of new life, you know. It is, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day for each and every one of us that we need to just in joy and respond to that. Here's the last part of this whole thing. Is he, okay, so Jesus d d dies, buried, rose again. You think, hey, that, that's the end of the story, right? You think, what else could there be? Like, uh, hey, it's Easter morning, and thank God he rose again, and what a celebration we're having. The worship team is phenomenal, you know, and they're just, we're just having a great time in the Lord. What else could there be? Well, let me read a little bit in the book of Mark. Mark 6, 9, 16, 9, and 14. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, and as they mourned and wept, and when they heard that he was alive and had seen by her, they did not believe. They did not believe. And that, then after that, he appeared in another form to two of them. And as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. 14. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him, after he had risen. We see this repeated phrase again. You know, and these are the disciples. Okay, think of it for a second, people. Okay, these people had been with Jesus for three and a half years, right? They're walking. They're walking on the, the shores of Galilee. They're seeing all the miracles, those 37 miracles. They've seen them all, right? And they, Jesus three times says to them, Hey, I am going to be killed. The religious leaders, are, and uh, they're also going to be kings that are going to uh, kill me. And, but on the third day, I am going to rise again. And they didn't understand it. They just heard the kill part, and they just faded out. And it was like, okay, he's going to die. He's going to die. And that was the end, you know, in their, their mind and thinking. He says it three times to them. And every, every word needs to be established by two or three witnesses. And Jesus established his witness that he was going to rise from the dead. And so he does this with them, right? But then we come to this point. He's, he rose again. Okay? He, he's, he's alive. And it says, they did not believe. They did not believe. They did not believe. Okay? He's having personal encounters with Mary Magdalene, having personal encounters with the people on the road to Emmaus. He's having a personal encounter. Then finally, with the 11, and they finally, he rebukes them for their unbelief. See, there, there is something in each of us that, and what these disciples do is they document their skepticism. They document their unbelief. It is like they are, it's the authentic 
ness of the the whole thing is like you know we have women record in the in a part of this which wasn't a part of that society at that time you have uh them sort of in hiding and they're not not de dealing with it well all of the things are going on and they're, they're documenting they they don't have it see there is something within each of us that is a cynic that is a critic that just is in a place where our life where we don't accept things naturally we are, we are cynics and that's it we are born cynics but that is why we need to be reborn that is why we need a spiritual birth in our heart there needs to be something that takes place in our life where instead of responding Hey, my five senses. I, I, I see this. Okay. Um, this doesn't make completely, totally sense to me. Uh, you know, I don't like that. You know, this is not the way I was raised. This is, the, I, uh, you know, I've read, I've experienced this. You know, I don't, I, and, and you take it from a natural plane rather than a supernatural plane. And that really is unbelief and hardness of heart. It gets to that place where we, we can be calloused or we can just be cold-hearted and we just, mm, I'm just throwing this off to the side. And Jesus comes to the people and he says, hey, he doesn't just abandon them, people. Okay, he doesn't say, hey, you, you got to work this out, you know, you're, you're just too critical on this thing, you know, you don't, you don't believe in my resurrection. He, he comes to them. He gently woos them once again and he, he pours out his love his grace to them and he says hey i have risen again you need to come you think you think of peter okay everybody's with me on peter peter you know he, he's the one who gets up hey jesus you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus says Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed that to you. And then the next thing, he, Jesus says, hey, we're going to be going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die, and I'm going to be rising again there. And Peter says, no, no, Lord, you can't do that. And Jesus turns around to him and says, hey, get thee behind me, Satan. And, and Peter's looking, Satan? I don't see Satan. How come Jesus is pointing at me? You know, and he points at him, and it's like, okay, that's where Peter goes. He went, he goes from up down. He's in, he's in the water. He's walking on the water. He's drowning. Oh, why were you afraid? Why didn't you believe? Okay, he comes to the Gethsemane, uh, the table of the Lord, and the Last Supper with Jesus. And the Last Supper, it's like Jesus, I will die with you. I would never let these things happen to you. And he, and Jesus says, Hey, before this night's over, you're gonna deny me three times. So there they are in the, by the fire at the the trial. And all of a sudden, a middle school girl. How many middle school girls do we have here today? I see that. Oh, one hand. Okay. <laughs> Two hands. How come middle school girls won't raise their hands? Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. So, so the, the, he goes into this place of deep grief and unbelief. In, in this time, Jesus still works with them. He says, hey, and, and you know what? I'm going to show up to Peter. Hey, I know he's really disillusioned. I feel there can be people, even in this room, you know, you've grown up in church. You've seen everything. And some disillusionment might have hit your heart and your soul where you say, hey, I, I don't know anymore. Maybe, maybe you came this morning and you said, man, I've got so many questions. I don't know what I believe and what, what I'm, tr I'm trying to figure it out still. Hey, I, I want you to hear Jesus is still working with you. He's, he's trying to work through those questions, those little doubts, those unbeliefs that you, you might be still working through. He still loves you with his grace. But there's a verse and... I want to read it to you. It's a good one. It's uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, If you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And there is a little, I'm just going to say the end of this quote. It says, belief with the intellect never produces moral and spiritual results. Belief with the heart does. There, there, there comes a point where there, there's an inner working of what God has been doing in your heart and life. It's a God consciousness within you. And God is saying, will you, at this time, put your complete and total faith and trust in me? Hey, you, you might have been through some terrible times. You may have been through some very confusing situations in your heart. You might have had some very strong disappointments that have come your way, that have really taken you off the path and detoured you from what you thought God was taking you to. And it, you may feel, I don't understand this. I don't know if this is the right path for me. But God comes to us in his wonderful love, and he says, hey, if, if you'll grab hold of me in your heart, I know, I know it doesn't all make sense in the intellect, in your cleverness, in your self-will. It may not make sense up there. But if you'll say in your heart, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. I put my confidence in you. Good God, I'm going to rely on you. I'm going to depend on you no matter what. Amen. Come on, everybody. That, that it is the truth. You know, Jesus says... I, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, okay? And he who believes in me, though he may die, you know, physically die, he shall live. You know, he who believes in me. There comes a point in our heart when we, don't may, we may not have all the answers, that we just have to grab on to the Lord and say, God, I trust you totally and completely. I am willing to make you king of my heart. I am willing to give all of my allegiance to you. Lord, some, uh, Lord, I look to you right now and I surrender my life to you. Whatever you have gone through, and we've all gone through something, but God works in our heart. There's an old story, July 15th, 1859, the story of a tightrope walker named Blondin. How many have heard of Blondin before? Charles Blondin. Okay, Charles Blondin um, was a, a tightrope walker, and he was going across Niagara Falls, and he was going across the American side to the Canadian side. How many have been to Niagara Falls? All right, I see those hands. All right, and um, as he was going across the Ni Niagara Falls, okay, he had a wheelbarrow, and it had some rocks in it. And he walked through it again, and he, wa he walks it again, and he comes to the Canadian side. There are 20,000 people watching him do this on July 15, 1859. And he's, he's right there, and he says, how many here believe I could take a person across Niagara Falls. And everybody's, yeah, 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 yeah. And he points to the reporter right up front. He says, hey, you, you, yeah, you, I'm talking to you. Uh, I want you in the wheelbarrow. And the guy says, yeah. He goes, J -j 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 no, no, no way. I, I am not there. See, th there's a difference in, in our hearts and our lives between belief and belief. See, some people may say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, you know, Christianity, yeah, I believe that. No, do you believe it? Are you willing to jump into the wheelbarrow? Are you willing to say, yes, Lord, I am 100% completely willing to give my life totally, fully to you. I'm willing to allow you to be the king of my heart. Not just the king over all other dominion, all other power, all other authority. Not just the king over Satan's number one demonic 
force he has in death, which he broke on this beautiful resurrection day. But also, he's going to be the king over my heart and live there forever and ever and enjoy those things that are reserved in heaven for you. For you. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Here's what we're going to do. The, the worship team is going to come up. But right now in front of you, there's a connection card. And I want you just to look at, if you have one in, near you, just to pick one up. And maybe you want to write something down there, maybe a prayer request for people in the church. But maybe you're here today and you say, there's a point under next steps, and it says, I'm ready to receive Jesus Christ. Maybe it would be the very first time. Maybe it's a return for you. Maybe in times past you were at that place. But maybe this Easter, such a beautiful, like it's the beginning of the week, the Sunday is, the first day of the week. Maybe it's a first day for you right now that you say yes to Jesus and say, Lord, be king of my life. Hey, I am challenge you, and you, you, I'm going to ask you to f fill out that card and just say, hey, I'm going to do that today. Right now, I'm just going to give you a second. Just give you a second. Maybe others have a prayer request. You, the team, leadership team, will pray for that during the week. But right now, I just want to give you that opportunity. Whoever believes in his heart and the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever believes, will be saved. Amen. Amen.